Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm a Christ follower. I'm here for anger, gluttony, and sexual sin. Again, my name is Digga. Hey, Digga. So that was Austin French. Um, I, ch- I always try to choose a song for different reasons and stuff. Um, and the reason I chose that song tonight, I, so I played that back in 2022. Some of the folks that have been here a while might remember that. So it was a couple of years ago. I played that song associated with this lesson. It doesn't have a lot to do about amends, to be honest, but the reason I picked it is two things. Only Jesus can change me. So we just came out of, if you remember, principle five, voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove my character defects. Um, And so again, just to remind you that Jesus can change you. And by the way, he will. Um, This program works. You've saw people come up here and take chips. Some of you are in 12 steps. Some of you have been here a long time. Some of you are brand new tonight. This program works. It's the greatest discipleship program, in my opinion, the church has ever come up with. The other thing that I really liked about that song, and again, the the words, if you listen to it a few times, it is incredible. Again, all these CR songs, if you will. I find pretty much all these songs relate to CR. But it said, only can, oh, Jesus can take your worst defeat and turn it into a victory. And again, many of us have had some defeats in our lives, you know, some struggles, hurts, habits, hangups. Um, and we come to celebrate recovery looking for some hope. And Jesus is that hope. Um, and he can take those defeats even your worst defeats, and turn them into victory. So again, just a little bit of reminder that this program can work, or does work, and that Jesus can change you, and he will. Um, So tonight we're going to get into principle six. Again, we've done a lot of work. Uh, Some of you have been with us all year. Again, some of you have been with us many years. Um, And we've done 15 lessons, just again, in case anybody's keeping track here, there's 25 lessons in Celebrate Recovery. We've done 15. We've got 10 to go. We're going to do one tonight. That would give us nine more. Tonight's lesson 16. Um, Primarily, and I'm not going to go through every single one of the principles again, but I am going to go and say that through those first five principles, we kind of focused on ourselves, right? Think about it. We were really working in ourselves. We stopped the denial. We were looking for hope. We made the one-time decision, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We committed to making, following his will daily. We did our inventories. And again, we're asking him to change us. It's all about me, if you will, or you as individuals. Tonight, principle six, we work on the relational aspects of recovery. Now, I suspect, again, I'm not the only person in here that has had some interesting relationships in your life, right? I mean, normally, again, I mean, I can screw things up pretty badly by myself, but I can really screw up relationships even worse. You know, hurt people, hurt people. You've heard all these things. By the way, extremely true. So, It's really important in principle six that we start working on that relational aspect of our recovery because if we can't fix or have God fix our relationships, restore our relationships, we're going to have some struggles. Now, I'm going to give you one caveat. Um, And again, I'm not going to get too much into forgiveness tonight, although tonight actually does have a little forgiveness in it. Tanya does an incredible job with forgiveness Um, which will be next week, by the way. So we're going to do back-to-back lessons. So again, I encourage you to try to make it next week because her forgiveness lesson is phenomenal. Um, But it's really important to understand some of you have been through some horrific things in your life, primarily in your childhood, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, you name it. And many as adults with relationships with spouses, etc., I want to make sure you understand, especially if you were as a child here. I know it's very difficult in some of these situations to forgive. But it's important for you to forgive those perpetrators. Um, It's not for them. It's for you. And again, Tanya will talk a lot more about that next week. But it's incredibly important. Just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean that you have to forget 
doesn't mean that you're saying what that person did was okay. And again, Tanya will talk about that all next week. But it's important for you in your recovery to forgive and to make amends. All right? But again, no guilt for any of you that were abused as children. Again, you're not guilty. You're going to say that again. If you remember column five in your inventory sheets, you specifically said that. That still pertains, but it is important to at least consider trying to forgive. And if, if you again, in my case, make amends where necessary. So principle six, uh, I'm going to go just through this really quickly, evaluate all my relationships, offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me, and make amends for harm that I've done to others, except to do so when harm them or others. Happy are the merciful, Matthew 5, 7, that's the beatitude. So that's the, if you will, the forgiving part. And happy are the peacemakers, which is Matthew 5, 9, again, the other beatitude that is associated with the amends part. And then we're going to talk about step eight tonight, uh, where we made a, a list of all the people that we have hurt and became willing to make amends to all of them. And then the, prince, the step, excuse me, the scripture that is associated with that, the golden rule, Luke 6.31, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, it just talks about becoming willing. Again, we're not, we're not getting into doing the amends tonight. You're going to work with your sponsors. Again, many of you have probably already done that because you're in a step study. Uh, but again, we want to become willing to do that. So let's go ahead and get into it. A, admit the hurt or harm. Now, I'm going to focus mostly on the harm tonight. Again, I don't want to steal a lot of Tanya's thunder, even though there's a lot of the forgiveness in here tonight. Um, and the scripture that's associated with admit the hurt or harm is do not judge others and God will not judge you. Do not condemn others and God will not condemn you. Forgive others and God will forgive you, Luke 6.37. So, why do I need to say I'm sorry to somebody? Why do I need to make amends? God's forgiven me. I've asked God, please for God forgive me for all the craziness that I've done to my family or whoever I might have hurt. Why do I have to make amends? God has forgiven me. Making amends is not about the past. It's about your future, right? Remember, you're in Celebrate Recovery to grow and become more like Jesus Christ and to overcome your hurts, habits, and hangups. In order to do that, I've said this before, you got to clean up the junk in your life. I know it's difficult, you do those inventory sheets, you go all the way back to your childhood, and there's a lot of people that I had on that list that I had to make amends to. Some of them, to <laughs> be honest with them, I'm like, I really don't want to talk to that person. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a painful conversation, right? But it's important to do that for my recovery. In order to continue to grow, I need to admit that hurt or that harm specifically. Again, we'll talk more about the harm tonight. So, three hottest words in the English language. It's not I love you, it's I am sorry. But here's the cool part. In Celebrate Recovery, after 11 years and one year of insanity where I didn't think I needed Celebrate Recovery, I've really learned to own my junk. I don't really mind admitting how screwed up I am. And sometimes I'm reminded weekly by my pastor that I'm a screwed up human being. <laughs> and I am grateful for that. I love that, by the way. So again, owning my junk is not really a hot pot, but still those three words, I am sorry, is really hot. Because I'm sitting there going, I really don't want to deal with this. I've, God, you're forgiving me. I've admitted that was stupid what I said. Do I really need to go to that person and say, I'm sorry, or I apologize for doing this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we'll get into this a little bit, but here's a key thing. I said three words, I am sorry. Don't add, but. <laughs> Don't do that. You've just killed the first three words. I am sorry, but. But you, no, 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 that is not a good way to make amends. Stop it, I am sorry. Let that person 
absorb that because most people are not used to being apologized to. And then you can have a discussion from there. But don't do the I am sorry, but you're, no, no. Don't use the but it, telling you it will screw you up. So you gotta admit the hurt and harm. I know sometimes you don't wanna deal with it, but you gotta do that. M, make a list. Again, treat others as you would have them treat you. Again, that's Luke 631, the, the golden rule. We're just talking about make a list. And here's the cool part. Celebrate Recovery really is very structured for a lot of good reasons. And one of them here really applies. You did an inventory sheet, and in some cases, many inventory sheets. And if you remember, column one, you listed somebody that hurt you, right? And then in column five, you started talking about what your part was. So you really already have that list of people that you need to make amends to done. Go to column five on your inventory sheets, and there's your list, okay? Or if you want to, just make a list, cut the piece of paper in half, left-hand side, left column would be the people that you need to forgive. Again, you could go back to your inventory sheets. And then column number two, or on the right side, you could put down the people that you need to make amends to. Now, again, inventory sheets are a great start, but many of us have done those inventory sheets, and even though we do 12 steps every couple of years or every other year, Probably between every other year, I have probably need to forgive somebody or I probably need to make amends. More likely with me, I need to make amends. So that's why I like the list. I like to keep the list updated. Some of the people have already done, but I tend to add to the list and really like that right column. By the way, there's an intentional reason that I do the amends lesson and there's an intentional reason that Tanya does the forgiveness lesson. <laughs> I tend to be dumb and hurt people, and Tanya needs to forgive a lot of people. Not, not Pastor Dave, obviously, because he's wonderful, but people, <laughs> people passed in her past life. So we do this specifically. I always do the amends lesson every year. She always does the forgiveness lesson. But again, not Pastor Dave, other people. All right, E, encourage one another, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, that's Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 24. So, before you sit down and make amends to somebody, whether, however you're gonna do that, you really need to meet with your sponsor and or your accountability partners, maybe both. If you got a sponsor, that's where I'd start. One, that sponsor is going to encourage you on how, when, et cetera, to make amends. But also, you're, you're, you're kind of doing a check here. Because like I said, if you're like me, a little slow, you know, I might not understand, especially the first time I'm making amends to somebody, how to properly do that. And the sponsor could go, yeah, I wouldn't do it quite that way or in that manner. I would maybe try it a little bit like this. So again, yes, your sponsor is going to encourage you. Your sponsor is going to pray for you. Sponsor is also going to help you make an amends properly because there is a proper way to do that. And as we keep going here, I'll talk about that. So it's critically important before you make amends to people that you get encouraged by your sponsor or get a good swift kick in the butt on how to properly make an amends. And not for them. Love your enemies and do good to them. I'm going to have to look up the uh, lend and expect nothing back. I can't read it anymore sometimes. <laughs> My eyes are going a little. I still think I can see, and sometimes I can't. Um, so, not for them. Sounds kind of selfish. Sounds a little bit selfish. When I'm making amends to somebody, I'm apologizing to somebody. Isn't it about them? No, no, it's not. It's about you. It's about me. It's about our recovery. We need to do that. Now, that person may or may not receive your amends very well. I had three amends to my children, three, three of them. I have three kids. And I thought I knew exactly how each one of them would receive my amends, because I did a lot of hurt to them for 20-something plus years. All three were completely different than I thought. My youngest one, who I actually thought 
I didn't do a whole lot to him. I had the two older ones to beat up on, so I didn't need to beat on the little one. He actually was the one that was like, you know, I can't believe it. I mean, I was like, ah. I mean, it was hard. The other two were like, yeah, I forgive you. I still don't get why you were so stupid and crazy and blah, blah, blah. But the youngest one was the one that, like I said, between all three, got out of it pretty okay. And actually, he was the one that really took it hot. And more importantly, he stood up for his two older siblings, if you will. My point in saying all that, other than I'm supposed to be up here sharing some of my stuff with you, is you just don't know how that person's going to take it. But here's the thing. It's not about them. Hopefully, they will experience some healing through your amends. I've been blessed. My family has experienced some healing because they were able to forgive. Again, Tanya's going to talk about that next week. Because they were able to forgive me, they were able to experience healing. So that is a side effect, if you will, of this. Here's the key. When you're doing amends, don't expect anything back. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know what they're going to say. They may not like it. You got to still do it. Somebody asked me recently, well, what if they don't accept your apology? That's okay. That's their situation. You've done what you need to do. You've followed the program. You will experience the growth that you need to experience. Hopefully someday that person will be able to forgive you because again, then they can experience the healing that they need. But you still need to make the amends and don't expect anything back. And again, it may not go quite the way you expect it to, but that's okay. You've done what you need to do. It's biblical. D, do it at the right time. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. <coughs> Excuse me. Philippians 2, 4. Do it at the right time. But I want to do it when I want to do it. Right? I mean, I'm in the program. I've got a book. Lesson 16 says I need to make amends. I'm a semi-type A. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that was a joke for anybody. <laughs> So I'm going to do exactly what it says, and I'm going to do it when I want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Evaluate all my relationships, offer forgiveness to those who've hurt me, and make amends for harm that I've done to others, except when to do so would harm them or others. You don't want to hurt the other person while you're making amends. You've already done that. Now you're just digging the hole deeper. You don't want to do that. So... Again, you have a sponsor. Listen to your sponsor. He or she will help you decide when is the right time to do that and how to do that. Again, I'm not going to get into all the techniques tonight, but again, some amends and forgiveness you're not going to do face to face. I did not do an amends and a forgiveness to my parents face to face. I did a burn letter and I read it to my sponsor. And I chose to do it that way, although again, my sponsor was a big help here is because I did not want to upset my elderly parents because they thought they were perfect. <laughs> and I was blessed. I had great parents, but there was a few issues in my childhood. We'll just <laughs> say a few. It just wouldn't have made sense to sit there and say, hey, mom and dad, I forgive you for this and this and this and this. It doesn't, it doesn't, it would not have gone well. My dad was an old Paisan, an old Italian, and it just would not have gone really well with me saying to him, I forgive you for everything. But again, not a good idea. So do it at the right time. Do it in the right format. Talk to your sponsor and pray about it. Pray about it. Pray about it. God will give you the right answer when the right time is. And again, like I said in my case, there was never a right time to do that face to face. That's why I did the burn letter. It worked satisfactorily. Again, as some of you have told before, don't do a lot of crying. I cried like a baby. 
um, forgiving my parents for some of the things that they had done to me, and then obviously some of the things that I had done to them as a child, because no child is perfect either. So do it at the right time is absolutely critical. And then, lastly, start living the promises of recovery. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Romans 12, 18, the Apostle Paul. Um, look, again, Tanya's going to talk a lot about forgiveness next week. Um, forgiveness amends, and we're going to do three lessons in, in this. We're going to do amends tonight. We're going to do forgiveness, and then lastly, grace, because that's really important in this whole forgiving and amends pot. We want to be able to offer people grace and ourselves grace. Again, Tanya's going to talk a little bit more about that next week with forgiveness of ourselves. Um, you can't hold on to resentments. I said that right up front for some of you folks that have had horrific things done to you as children. Um, and I said that you were not guilty. Holding on to those and not forgiving those perpetrators, no matter how evil they were, is not hurting them, it's hurting yourself. We must let go of the resentments. We must let go of the hurts. We must deal with them. We must forgive because God says, biblically, we need to forgive and we need to make amends to people. And when we do that, that's clearing out some of that junk that we've talked about in principle four in our relationships, right? Love God, love others. It's important that we work on our relationships. And in order to do that, we can't hold grudges. We can't hate people. We can't not forgive people. No matter what they've done or said to us, if we want to continue to move forward and grow and overcome our hurts, habits, and hangups, we need to be able to forgive and we need to make amends. And when we do that, we can experience the promises that recovery talks about. And as I said, Tanya will talk about forgiveness next week. There's some really incredible growth that can happen there when you learn about forgiveness, not only of others, but of yourself. But tonight, we focused on amends. So again, I am sorry, three toughest words in the English language, but we need to do it in order to clean out that junk and in order to restore our relationships to where they're at. Again, doesn't mean that we've got to forgive and forget doesn't mean that we may not, that person may not forget. I mean, trust me, again, if somebody has hurt somebody, and specifically my family, my relationships are not the same. So anybody tells you, oh, yeah, it, no, it's never going to go back to the way it was. They've forgiven me. They haven't forgotten. They've forgiven me. We've all moved on. The relationships are different now. I didn't say worse. I didn't say better. I just said different. And the four people I'm talking about, my wife and three, and I won't give you who, but there's actually some better relationship there. And then there's others that are still a little bit, you know, not as good as I would like it to be. But I did what I needed to do, and I'm moving forward. And it's up to them what they decide to do. And again, if they do decide to forgive, they'll experience a lot of healing. So I am sorry don't throw butt in there. <laughs> Stop there, <laughs> and then you'll be okay. All right, let's go ahead and do the serenity prayer.